Masks are the ultimate leveller of people. During this pandemic, we've all had to wear masks, rich and poor alike. My name's Livon and today we're going to briefly look at a few different types of traditional Venetian masks and what they represented, and then we'll make a style of mask known as Columbina. I fell in love with the Venetian masks I saw when I spent two short days in Venice a few years back. They're so full of life and personality. I'm a fine art photographer and I've delved, it, delved into headdresses and masks to tell the stories I want to tell with my images. Costumes, masks and all kinds of disguise are a way of being someone else for a brief time and I think we all love that kind of escapism. Disguises mean that we can be anyone or anything we want to be, within reason, and this has been the case for centuries. In 13th century Venice, Celebrations and parties were held from December the 26th until the start of Lent, which is almost three to four months, and everyone mingled together, both upper, upper and lower classes. They all wore elaborate masks to hide their identity. In fact, in the 17th century, doctors wore their elaborate masks with long beaks that covered their noses and mouth to protect them from the plague. Sound familiar? They would stuff the long beaks with herbs and flowers to mask the smell of death in the streets around them. Masks were made from leather, porcelain, glass or carta pesta, which is what we call paper mache. There are about seven or eight different types of Venetian masks that most designs stem from, so we'll explore them briefly and then decorate a columbina mask to mimic that particular Venetian style. First we have the border. It has a large nose and projecting chin and no mouth. At times, this one was obligatory to wear at political decision-making events for anonymity. So masks were mandatory back then too. Only men could wear the borta and it was worn with a black circular cape and a tricorn hat. Next, we have the moretta, which means mute servant woman. It was a small, black, strapless, velvet oval mask with wide eye holes and no lips or mouth was just large enough to conceal a woman's identity and it was held in place by the woman wearing it, biting on a button. This made them unable to speak, hence the mute servant. The Volto or Lava Mask is the most iconic mask that we have seen. Volto means face and Lava means ghost. It's most commonly worn with a tricorn and cape like the Borta, but it's white and is often gilded and decorated. It's heavier than most masks and is a tighter fit. It covers the entire face, including the chin, and the lips are always sealed. As I mentioned earlier, doctors wore a mask called Mel Mel Medico della Peste, or the Plague Doctor. It didn't start as a carnival mask, but as a way to stop the spread of disease. Worn with a black hat and cloak, this outfit also consisted of white gloves and a staff to move patients without having to touch them. It covered most of the face and had round eye holes with crystal discs, making it look like it had glasses on. Next, we have the pantalone or the scaramuccia. Similar to the plague doctor, but the beak is much smaller than on the medico della peste. And this beak points forward rather than down. The design is based on a classic character from the Italian theatre and represents a person who is funny and smart. The pantaloni is the joker in the crowd, a lively person who can keep others entertained. The mask comes in a wide range of different colours and styles. Arlecchino, or the Harlequin, is identified by the famous Harlequin costume, multicoloured pattern of red, green and blue, and it represents clothes that are so old and patched as to have lost their original colour and material. He's a slow thinker, and he actually has a love interest in the servant girl, Columbina, who we'll be dealing with soon. The Zanny mask is a half mask in leather with a low forehead, bulging eyebrows and a long nose with a reverse curve towards the end. It's said that the longer the nose, the more stupid the character. The low forehead represents stupidity. And last but not least, we have the Columbina. It's what we're concentrating on today. Today. It only covers the wearer's eyes, nose and upper cheeks. It's highly decorated and it's believed to have been created for an actress who didn't want to cover her beauty entirely. While it's now worn by both, both men and women, it was originally worn only by women. All masks can be tied on with the ribbon at the back of the head, held up by a stick in the middle of the mask or at the side. And of course, the moretta was held with a button in the mouth. 
that's going to be one of the choices you'll make today. So before we get on to creating the mask, I just wanted to show you a few of the masks that I do have, and you can see that I am a little bit obsessed with them. Some I've purchased as they are, and others I have, I may have purchased them and then redone them, or I might have made them from scratch. So this is one that I haven't done anything to, it's just, it's how I bought it. And I actually bought it in an op shop. Now, if you feel the back of that, that is actually a paper mache mask and it's designed to hang on the wall um, it does tie up with ribbon though so I got given a second one of these and the um, gestery sort of crown was broken so I actually used that I took it off and used it for a headdress but what I then did with the face was that I added my own hydrangeas to it and just made it look a little bit different um, they're both Volta masks, Volto masks, as is this one, but this obviously has um, more of the Harlequin design. So you can see you can really mix and match. You can do what you want with them. Um, I, was, I only wanted to show you what the original patterns were, and I've got fluff and feathers everywhere. So um, there's another one. The ones that you can pick up quite often in op shops that are quite cheap are this style, and they've often have got feathers and things on them. But these are fantastic for making your own masks out of. And the reason being, this one's matte, but this is the same style. And as you can see, it's really shiny and smooth. Now that is fantastic for painting over the top of um, because of that smooth surface. It's just, you get a really shiny, beautiful, glossy look. Um, this is one I made for a movie, which was made from one of exactly that. So I just painted it in my own colours. I wanted to resemble a peacock. So I put some fringing around the outside, painted it in my own colours and added some peacock feathers. And it's just completely changed the look of it from this store-bought mass-produced into something that's that little bit more original. So, you know, it's entirely up to you to make something that you love out of it. Um, you can also buy very, very papery ones. You can see that's completely bendable. But if you wanted to make that a little bit firmer, you could just by paper macheing the inside of it and leaving that on the outside, which is something that I was planning on doing. Um, that's got a price tag of a whole $1.25. So you could definitely make that into something that was pretty fantastic with a little bit of work. Um, one of the masks that I didn't speak about was the gato, which means cat. Um, and this, I guess, is very similar. It's a little bit bigger than the Columbina, which is just, you know, these half ones. Um, so I guess, you know, animal of some sort. So this is a butterfly, obviously. And I've made this one for an upcoming shoot, but the shape was all there. All I did was just painted it to the way I wanted it. So, but it was just white to start with. So I've redone that. Um, while not exactly Plague Doctor, I wanted to do something that in years to come will remind me that this was made during lockdown and during these weird times that we're living in. So the Plague Doctor would generally go right, you know, right down further, it would cover the face. But this one I just did as a little bit of nod to the Plague Doctor. And as you can see, there's flowers at the side to represent those flowers and herbs they used to put in the beak. Now this started life as one of these, <laughs> just one of those ones, and I've just cut it to my own standard, so I cut this middle little piece out of it. And then I added the beak, which was just made from cardboard, and I added the wings, which were just made out of a cereal box. So um, it, these are quite easy to do. The, the beak's a little bit tricky, just getting that roundedness, but it's not impossible, obviously. Um, and then just decorate it as you want it. So I'll put the flowers and all on it. But yes, this also started life just as one of the half masks. So, you know, you can see you can do some pretty amazing things with them. Um, this was one that was made to match a paper dress that I made. And again, I cut this to the shape I wanted. It was very similar to one of those shapes. And I cut that down and I rounded the sides because I wanted a slightly softer look. And then this was 
just paper mache with pages from an old book that was being thrown out. I made feathers, I made butterflies, you know, I made bits and pieces and twirls and stuff. It's completely made out of cardboard and then I went around with some gold paint and just decorated it. So it's really quite effective. This one normally has a stick at the side, but that did get broken during a photo shoot. So I have to reattach that. But, you know, something so simple as some pages can look fantastic. And then last but not least, this is one that's a little bit more compl complicated. And we've all seen the um, Phantom of the Opera style masks. Well, this is basically what this one was made out of. So it's just one of those. I actually cut it a little bit higher so that it, you know, covered one eye or didn't cover one eye. Um, and then I just added bits and pieces to it, like chess, pieces of a chess set, um, some pom-poms and some just little twirls, pieces of jewellery, whatever I had, I just stuck to it with hot glue. The hot glue gives you a really solid, firm base as well and makes it that structurally a little bit sounder. Um, PVA does too. They're both really good. Um, but because these pieces were so heavy, um, this is quite a heavy piece, so I used hot glue for this. But, you know, it's got roses, all sorts of stuff. And then I just spray painted it all gold. And because there's different textures with material and plastics and, you know, there's metals and stuff on here, it gives a really layered effect because it completely changes the colour of the gold, um, depending on what the texture is. And then this is also placed with a... Um, a headdress as well but, but they just go well together they were all part of the same thing so now that we've seen those what we're going to do is we're going to start on our columbina mask so i'll just clear this off and i'll set up and we'll get going okay so we're ready to start now in the pack that you got um there will be most of this stuff in there like that uh, there'll be most of this stuff in here but to differing degrees different colors perhaps even a different shape mask um, but if you didn't get the pack it's still a very very cheap process to go through and you know you can use a lot of the stuff that you've got at home so basically we get a mask now some of you will have the the more rounded mask that's fine um, you can change that mask and I will be changing this one um, I've cut up some paper already for some paper mache you'll have a metallic marker and pen um, some brushes, a glue stick, um, PVA, you'll have some ribbons and some bits and pieces, some string, some paint, a couple of doilies, some serviettes, some feathers and just some beads and this. This is your palette for painting basically because you just want to be able to throw it out. Um, the other thing, I've just got a, you know, an old jar, an old tarte exhaust jar. Um, just that will be for washing your brushes in between but once you've used your brush for the paper mache it will be pretty grotty and you'll want to throw it out um, the glue very rarely comes out of it so what we're going to do i'm not going to do this one today but generally what i would do is paper mache a mask first so i'm just going to use this one here that as you can see it's really bendy and if you want to actually add stuff to it it wants to be a little bit firmer than that so I'm just going to paper mache that to go through. Now what I do is I take the PVA glue um, and I mix it with a little bit of water to start with. Not the whole bottle because you want some solid um, or you know thicker. But what I do is, I've already mixed mine up I'm sorry, but it's generally about a 70% PVA to 30% water. So you don't need to do a lot, just do a small amount in a, in a little jar, perhaps even one of these jars. Um, and yeah, so if you were if you were to do this jar, you'd probably just fill it up, say, you know, um, I'm just trying to think. All right, if you put, like with something like this, if you just put a little bit of water and then up to there with the PVA and mix it up. So basically what you're looking for is you're looking for this sort of consistency. So it's sort of a bit pory still. Um, PVA is a plastic glue, so it's fantastic for this sort of stuff. It does give a really nice finish and it can also be used later for a varnish so I'm going to be using that and so we're just going to start so basically I'll use a smaller brush um, basically start on a few little bits and pieces and if it's plastic if the um, 
mask you're a little bit plasticky that's okay it will eventually go on to it so just soak it just give it a really really good soak first of all and then you want to take one of your strips of paper which I've already cut up or torn up and you want to actually take it around the edge because we want the edge to be covered as well and it just it this just gives it so much more strength than the mask alone would have so basically just take it round don't be afraid to run your fingers through it and to run it over the top of it I use my fingers a lot however you will find that if your fingers are particularly sticky as this starts to dry it will um, it will peel some of the thing um, the paper off so just make sure that you've got a cloth here as well just to wash your hands as you go so basically just do this and you want to do it all over you want to give it a nice clean neat um, and smooth surface so it's not going to be a hundred percent glossy and smooth but the PVA actually creates a really nice film over it as well a, a nice glossy finish so but try not to get too many creases and stuff in it at the back doesn't matter so much because we're not going to see that um, but yeah, so just where you can, I always go over it again, and that's probably not traditional with paper mache, but I find with this sort of stuff, you're gonna get a, a cleaner and smoother surface if you do that. So we just keep going all the way around and cover the whole lot and you'll do the same when it comes to the eyes if you're in a smaller place like around here just either tear your paper in half to get a smaller a smaller section because that will give you a neater um, a neater finish if you put a big piece there it will all be bulgy and it will crease and you're gonna it's gonna show in the finished product so you want these pieces around here to be as delicate as can be. Now I've also put cardboard down on my table because I really do make a mess when I'm doing this. Um, I'm sure some people can do it neatly, I'm not one of them. So just keep going with it. I'm not gonna finish this whole thing because this is really just to show you. And it, it, it's, look, it's really, really basic stuff. It's, you know, um, yes, you can use flour and water um, as we used to when we were kids. But the thing with the flour and water is the flour can get moldy and it can also get eaten by mice. So I don't use that. I prefer the PVA and the PVA also, like I said, it gives you this really, really smooth, almost plasticky um, type of finish, which I find a lot better. Now you can do the inside as well and I often do just to give it that extra bit of strength but you'll be really really surprised when you finish this and when it's dry to find out just how firm this has now become to to have gone from you know quite a thin sort of almost papery mask it will take on quite a strong um, texture and body so it really does help and you'll just end up with um, this I'll stop with this one there but just finish the whole thing when you've done it when it's all done don't be afraid to put your finger in there you can use a brush but I just find a finger you can actually feel the the bumps and the lumps definitely smooth around these areas here so smooth around those and just make sure that you've got this really really nice smooth layer don't be afraid to leave a fair bit of the glue on it but just make sure that it's smoothed out because that will fill in gaps and certainly make it a lot um, smoother for your decorations to go on now if when you finish this part you think oh, it's a little bit too um, bumpy for you that's okay um, you can actually fill it in with a little bit of a joint compound that sort of stuff which is just you know you're plastering for your walls but a really really fine fine spread of it and that just stops the lumps and bumps but to be honest because it's it's homemade I actually think it looks good and the decorations and stuff 
um, they cover most of it anyway so I wouldn't stress too much about that but yeah so just go right around the whole thing um, with that you can cover up these these um, strings if you want so that they're not really visible and they will get hidden in your hair anyway but yeah so just keep going over the whole lot and until you've got it all smooth a nice smooth surface just keep going back over it but once it starts to dry leave it alone because um, yeah then you can start to pull the paper off but while it's still fairly wet just keep going so then leave that to dry and then we'll come back and I'm going to start on this one um, and you know you don't have to do this step if you don't want if you're happy with it just like that then just do that but especially if you have a much weaker one like one of the paper ones this is sort of um, almost fabricy. this one um, but yeah so if you've got something like that you really want to make it just that little bit firmer and it will sit nice and it will hold all the decorations a whole lot better so let it dry completely and then we'll come back and we'll decorate okay so we're now ready to start our mask I've finished putting all the paper mache on that now I've just laid it on some plastic so that it will not stick to cardboard or paper and I'll leave that to dry so hopefully if you've done this part of it yours will be dry by now if not we're going to start on this one and the first thing I'm going to do is I don't think I particularly want these wings they don't do much for me so I'm just going to take a pair of scissors and I'm going to cut them off and just round the edges a little bit you don't want to go too close to the elastic that's been pop riveted in there um, but you do want to just you know that to me is a better look than this I'm not really keen on these sort of cat's eyes things so and just try and make sure that you've got it sort of at a similar angle yeah so I'm pretty happy with that um, and just smooth it out Right, I'm still tossing up about this part here, but I think I'll leave it on there for now. Um, similarly, if you've got one of the more round ones, you could cut scallops into it if you wanted to, or you could just get a little piece of cardboard, just thin, really thin cardboard, and you could stick it onto there. So, so now, We've got this and we just have to decide what we're going to do with it. So I'm going to make, I think, a little bit of a, a cross pattern today. And so I'm going to get one of my brushes, probably the mid-size one. Now we want to use this for our palette. So I'm going to put some pink paint. It hasn't been opened yet and I can never get these open properly. There you go worked for me today so you probably need a fair bit of the pink or whatever color you're going to do so I'm actually going to make little crisscrosses on mine I think and I'm just going to use a little bit of masking tape just to mask it off you could also do a pencil line if that's what you wanted to do um, if you're a really good painter I'm not so I'm going to use masking tape to, to mask the edges of it. And I think I'm just going to go across the eyes there. So I don't know whether you can see that, but I put one there and one there. So this part in here will be pink. And then I'll go over it once that's dry and do the white. So I'll do both sides. And all I'm doing is lining up that masking tape against the eye socket right on the edge of it. Right. Which will also leave me a nice little diamond up there that I could do the pink in and a nice straight line to do it with. So just really rub that down. You're not going to take anything off it. And then one more. 
again on the outside of that edge. Now you don't have to do this, like I say, if you want to, um, if you want to just paint freehand you can, you don't have to do the stripes either, you could just do all one colour or however you really want to do it. So that is now one there, one there, one there, one there. So I'm just going to paint this pink. Try and get your strokes as smooth as you can because obviously the finer the or you know the the smoother the strokes the the nicer outcome you'll have. But also remember we're going to be putting a lot of other stuff on top of this. And every now and then I just like to give a little bit of a a wash with water as well. Just makes it spread a little bit easier. Pressing that or making sure it's all pressed down so that I don't get jagged bits there because I really want it to be fairly straight. Sometimes on these um, curved pieces it can tend to be a little bit creased which also might not cover it so well so just make sure you do that. Also, just have a look at the edges when you're doing it and you'll see that they're still a little bit white and we don't want that. So we just make sure we go over that and just pink them up a bit. Just as smoothly as you can. do this middle part pink as well. And thinking about it, I'll probably put some feathers or something up there, but we'll see. I don't have any great plan for this. I, I like to work a bit more organically where I just choose as it takes me. Right. Now remember, you know, you've always got a little bit of drying to do in the meantime with this. Um, you can give it one coat, you can give it two coats. This paint seems to have covered it fairly well, but I think I'm still going to give it an extra coat as I go along. And I've just dipped that back in water just to make it a little bit smoother because I can see a few run lines on it. And I'll put my finger in that. Not too wet when you put it back in the water, just enough just to try and get rid of a few of the little lines on your paint. And again, just around the eyes, just make sure you've, you've done around the eyes as well. And I don't mind that those eyes have got where it is going to be white, I don't mind that that's going to be a defined pink. That's fine by me. And just all around those little bits around here as well. You know, if you want, you could paint the inside. It's entirely up to you. I'll probably get this a little bit messy, so I will probably have to paint the inside because I like the inside to look nice as well. And that's not the most important thing in the world, but I like to. But I'll do that after everything else is finished because I'd probably paint it like a, a plain black or a plain white inside. So I'm just going to let that dry. Um, so I'll just give that a few minutes. It won't take long. It's an acrylic based paint, so it's going to dry fairly quickly. And I'm not going to give this a second coat, I don't think, unless by the time it's dry, it looks dreadful. If it does, I will, but if not, I won't. But it's up to you if you choose to give it a second coat 
go for it you know the um, that second coat will really give it a nice smooth look I'm only just going by time with this one but it's up to you you can do you know and you could do as many stripes as you want you can do whatever you want it's your mask okay so as I'll have written up before the masking tape didn't work it ended up pulling some of this off so making it quite um, papery underneath but it doesn't matter we'll fix it but if you want to do a stripe you're probably better off ruling a line and painting so anyway we are going to start with some white now so make sure you in between I've got some fresh water and paint uh, clean the brush entirely and now I'm going to start on the white and as you can see you really don't need very much paint at all uh, I did do a second coat on this just to um, make it a little bit more vibrant so basically now I'm just going to come over and paint over now it is a little bit it's going to be a little bit rougher because of the paper that's come up but that's okay we'll make it work and of course I don't need to tell you you can mix the colors if you want so if you wanted to make a pale pink instead of the um, white and dark pink you could do that just mix the two together but I'm going to stick with just a plain white so basically you do need one of the probably for me I need the flatter brush for this just to go along the lines but don't stress too much if they're not perfectly straight because you can put a little bit of braid or ribbon or something down there that is going to cover up that transition anyway so don't stress too much about it if it's not absolutely perfect And again just make sure you do the edges as well just to make sure that they're covered and I can't stress enough you do not have to be an expert painter to do this because you've got so many other things that you're going to put on this that nobody's really going to even notice the paint and then when we're finished <clears throat> We're actually going to use the um, PVA glue and water mixture as a varnish. Now that's not to say you can't go and buy some varnish because I quite often spray mine with a gloss varnish because I want it very, very glossy for these. But the um, PVA and water actually does a really good job of that too one more just this side here and see where I've you know you can see where I've made big clangers and put my fingers so just cover that up it's not an issue but yeah definitely the masking tape was a huge mistake but you live and learn I've been able to use it on other masks just these ones I wasn't able to use it on so um, probably once that one the one that I've paper mached once that's dried that would be better because PVA is a very plastic glue so it creates this plastic seal um, which is why another reason why I often I usually paper mache them first but anyway like I say you live and learn right So this is the side that's really rough but that's okay because we're probably going to use feathers and stuff to cover that up so that's not an issue so I'll just wait for that to dry now and um, and then comes the fun part of all the decorations and that's where your 
artistic license comes in you can do whatever you want so if you're not great at painting as I'm not obviously um, don't stress about it because you know by the time we put things like little bits of ribbon or stuff on here it will create a totally different look so don't stress about that let's just get this dry and then we'll start the finishing touches okay so this is now dry it's um, very rough as I'm sure you can see but it doesn't matter the back's quite rough but I can paint that over afterwards so that's not an issue um, and yeah it's rough but this is where we add all our bits and pieces that we've got with it so um, you would have got a um, little bundle of ribbon and it would be wrapped in sticky tape and, and threads and you know things like this so just have a look through that see if there's anything you'd particularly like in that and just basically because it's dry run it along the edge and just see what you think see if there's anything there that you think you could use um, now this this little bit of lace here this um, already ruffled lace um, people will have different things in their packs so it's sort of hard to say what you've got in yours but that would actually probably look quite nice as I as eyelashes so we might consider using that but for now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this little sequin stuff and I'm going to I think stick it down there over the top of that line that is there so that then covers up the, the paint and I think that will actually look quite nice and it will go a little bit over into the eye but I'm not particularly bothered about that now I'm still just using this watered down mixture but here's where you can use your straight version of PVA um, but I'm quite comfortable using this so that's fine so I'm just going to paint a little edge down there if you've got a hot glue gun feel free to use your hot glue gun instead um, I would probably normally use a hot glue gun but this is quite good and it does stick quite well so just make sure you push it down firmly and I think I'm going to, instead of cutting it, I think I'm going to take it around the nose like that to almost mimic nostrils. And PVA dries clear, so don't worry about getting it on anything. It doesn't matter, it dries clear. You will not have an issue with it. Um, the only time with PVA, if you're going to use it and you want a really clear, glossy look, don't paint wet. P, don't paint over wet PVA because that gives it makes it a little bit more cloudy but generally you won't have any issues so this is a little bit fiddly to do but you'll do it so I'm just curling that around there pressing it down it won't take very long to dry at all this side's already starting to take it quite well so and don't use too much of the glue at this moment just just what you need so there so as you can see that's covered up all those lines and I'm quite happy with that it's quite quirky and fun so then cut it off a little bit more than you need because you can trim around it when it's dry properly right so while that dries and I might just put a little bit more just around the edges just to hold it down once again this will dry clear so we don't have to worry too much don't feel that you're going to wreck it the only thing you want it is for it to be fairly smooth so once you've sort of dabbed it on like this then just take your brush and just brush over again and again this just gives you a very glossy look and it holds everything in place right 
So we've got that part on which I really like. So just keep pressing it down. Again, you don't want to be touching the wet glue too much because it then starts to lift a bit. So, um, you know, if you've got, for instance, a little peg or a bulldog clip, bulldog clip might be too sharp, but a peg, just a clothes peg, you could pop that on to hold it and that will just hold it in place until it dries. But I'm just going to press it down with my scissors. It will, it will grab quite nicely. It already is starting to take really well. So I'm leaving these end bits on for now and I'll go back and trim those afterwards once it's dried properly. So as you can see, we're starting to get a good little bit of shimmer to it and, uh, and I think it looks really good so far. So next what we might do is we want to put something up this way. So let's have a look. Now I don't mind that too much, um, that looks not too bad, it really does give it the stripy look, but I think I might use something instead, like perhaps some of these, oh, let's have a look at that, Hang on, let me get underneath it, so you can use these doilies that were in there, you can use them as a little bit of lace edging if you want. And once you've covered them in PVA, they become quite durable. So, no, I don't think I'll use those, though. So I think we might get some little, um, just these, like these little sequiny things, perhaps, and do a row of them. I'll just tip some out. Now, the hardest part with this, really, is just picking them up. If you've got tweezers, that's probably a good thing. And you know, um, you're not videoing yours, so you can take your time and do um, sections at a time, whereas, you know, I'm sort of doing it all at once. So, you know, you can let yours dry a whole lot longer than I'm letting mine dry. I would generally let this part dry quite well before I decided to add anything else on. Now, these sequins are not easy to pick up. I'm going to do it anyway. And I'm just going to put it right over those lines so that they're covered. And just random, I guess, just different sizes. And that will just... And like I say, if you've got tweezers, even better. Tweezers would be really good. So just keep popping those in a straight line until we're all done all the way and as you can see the PVA just grabs it really really quickly and like I say I'm still using the watered down version um, some of you may have heard of Mod Podge this is basically homemade Mod Podge and again it's 70% PVA and 30% water roughly but you don't need to be too pedantic about that because it works I've, I've had it thicker than this I've had it thinner than this and it all eventually works so all right, so there's one line at the moment it looks messy because you can still see the PVA but as I say that will dry clear so it's okay and the hardest part is picking these up but never mind You can probably, perhaps an easy way is to actually wet your finger a little bit. Yeah, that's good. And then you'll be able to pick it up fairly easily. Yep. And then we're just going to do some, I just, I'm just drying it off as well. I'm not making my finger completely wet, but just a little bit damp so that these sit against it nicely. Two up that time, but that's all right. No, that one didn't work. Yep, 
So I'm just going for the really small ones around the eye so they're a little bit more uniform, but the rest is a little bit um, mixed up, big ones and small ones together. a bit right so we have got another line along here of something a little bit sparkly just be careful not to knock that too much if it's not completely dry right Another line along this side. The wet finger definitely helps. It also just sort of knocks a little bit of the glue off as well the glue tends to make your fingers just that much stickier then it really is hard to get stuff off so This is really fiddly, I know, but it'll be worth it when it's done. If you really want to push them down or push them around, you can get the end of your paintbrush that will be really good for that as well. Push them into line properly. Just make sure there's no glue on the end of it though, because that can make it a little bit painful. little ones are just so small but they will look quite sweet along here I think, yep. I'm just going to tip a couple more out. Right, so now, I hope that's clear and you can see that. Now we've got, we're starting to look a little bit more now like a Venetian mask. And again, just press those down to make sure, and if it's not sticking really well, which is top parts coming undone, just add a little bit more. It's not a big deal. I've just knocked it too much while I've been adding the others. So, but like I say, if you have a hot glue gun without burning yourself, um, use the hot glue gun that will hold it instantly so right so now we've got those on so now we have to look at what we're going to do with everything else so I'm just wondering whether I might put some ribbon or some lace
maybe from there. I don't really want to do it any further round. Yep. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this lace. Um, now, I think from memory there's, there's some of this gathered or there's some not gathered. Either, either is fine. But what I'm going to do with it is I'm actually going to glue it on behind the mask. Because I think that will look better. And I'm not going all the way to the middle. I'm only going to go behind that line there um, where we added the sequins because I just think that will look nicer because we're going to put feathers and stuff around the top so we don't need to do too much there again if you've got a peg pop a peg on here that will hold it Don't glue it all at once, just glue little bits that you're working on at a time, like that. Okay? Because if you glue it all at once, it, just, it won't hold. So. Right. It's come undone. It's alright. You sort of got to work around that elastic that's on the back as well, so which is sort of making it a little bit harder, but not too much. We'll get there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually paint over the top of the edge of the lace as well which will just help it to stick a little bit better right I should say, by the way, when you if you're using a peg, try and use a plastic peg. Um, that won't stick. The wood glue could actually cause a wooden peg to stick to it, and you'd pull, um, you know, more paper and stuff off. So, as you can see, like you know, you're going to get really dirty hands. That is part and parcel, and those dirty hands might get a little bit on the front. Try to be careful, but don't be too stressed if you do get a little bit of paint or glue or whatever over other parts of of this because we still have we've still got a lot more to do so as you can see I'm just putting the paint around the edge and once I've finished doing that I'm just painting over the top of that edge of the lace as well just to hold it in a little bit firmer and it's starting to work And it is a slow process um, it wouldn't be you know again you could do this with a hot glue gun and it would be a bit quicker but again putting it on like that be careful with your hands I've barely got fingerprints left from my hot glue gun so do just be a bit careful with that right so you can see that's starting to look good obviously of course measure that you've got enough lace to go all the way when you do take your hands off take them off carefully 
because it does it sticks to your hands and your hands will stick to the lace and to everything else so you just need to be a little bit careful okay so I'm sorry about that I had a little bit of a camera malfunction so I've actually stuck it all on in that time and it has dried now as you can see I've put a couple of pegs here on the nose and up here just to hold these pieces in because they were the parts that were looking like they were going to come undone so you didn't miss much it was still just the continuation of that lace and then just popping some pegs on so now if I took those pegs off it's pretty dry and it's looking really really rock solid so I'm happy with that but I'll keep those pegs there in case um, like putting feathers and stuff on would be really handy with that so um, you would have got a lot of serviettes in your pack and the reason these are so good is that they're very thin they go on really really easily and they can just decorate something so beautifully um, I did consider putting a flamingo on here which I could do right in the middle there without too much issue I think it would fit quite well but I'm actually going to go for roses and possibly an Eiffel Tower but like if you were doing something for um, a little kid, big kid that loves superheroes, this is perfect. Like this is absolutely fantastic with your Superman and your boom and zap and all those things. Brings me right back to my childhood of watching Batman. Um, and there's all these others like, you know, if you were doing a yellow one, some lemons would look absolutely gorgeous. Then we've got some buds of some sort here. I should know what they are and I can't think straight now. So you've got all these that you can use, but we're going to use this one. So the secret to putting these on is to open it up, but then you want to take that second layer off. You only want one layer. So if there are three layer napkin, you only want one still. In this instance, normally if I was doing like a decoupage, I would um, use, just tear it. But because I'm not, I'm going to cut it. I don't really want any bits hanging over the sides so so I'm just going to cut around that it's very easy to cut and you don't have to be perfect with it but just try and get it so there's not too many little pieces on the outside to show um, but this is also quite good because it almost sort of dissolves a little bit as well and so it gives you a really nice blend whereas if you have a thicker paper it doesn't do that the thicker paper will um, the, the thicker paper will sit harder and it and it will give you a solid edge whereas this doesn't seem to so it's fantastic for doing stuff but always make sure you take that second layer off because that's where you tend to start to get bubbles and stuff but um, yeah so I'm not going to do a whole lot of of this on there but I just thought one would be really nice and yeah depending on the colors that you're doing and stuff they really can look effective so I'm thinking where could we put it yeah I'm probably thinking about there but to do that I'm gonna have to take that there's a little um, stamp on it that says summer but I'm gonna take that off not necessary I'm just going to have the roses I'm going to take that little part there off as well so now I've got our roses and that's going to sit quite nicely just in there so all we need to do is just pop a little bit of the glue there make sure your hands really are free of glue when you do this part because this is so delicate You want to try and get it as flat as you possibly can. And I'm just going to do a little bit of a, a rub over the top with it. Now, that's gone a little bit over, so I'm just going to pull it up very, very gently and cut that little bit off. And I'm actually just going to push this one down a little bit there. But do be careful because this will tear. So there, so we've got some flowers now in the middle. 
and they will look quite nice once it's done. Like I said, we haven't finished yet. Um, but I'm just wondering whether I might even do an Eiffel Tower up here as well. Why not? Let's go all French inspired. Even though it's a Venetian mask. But hey, we could do whatever we like because it's our Venetian mask. So again, I've got some little bits of the pink in there, but that doesn't matter because I'm probably going to put it over this pink. I just think that would look quite nice, so I don't have to be too careful with that. And again, you don't have to be really careful with this at all. The little edges will come off. So I'm just wondering. Yeah, I think we'll do that. So. There we go. Let's do a little bit of an Eiffel Tower. Right. So now I think I'm just wondering whether I might actually add some more flowers down this side and I think I will because that side's pretty rough there because of the masking tape that I used that I shouldn't have. So I think I'll just go around that and use a little bit of a little bit more of this and I might use the edge parts for this just so that We've got a bit of a straight line across there. So yeah, that should look good, but I'm going to take it in a little bit further. Okay. So we just start putting some of those down the edge there. I think that will look quite nice. Just gives us another little almost it looks almost fabricy which is quite nice it's quite a nice look and like I say I'm taking the edge bits to complete this straight line here which I want to follow along with just gonna cut that round there because that's sort of a bit round so One more this side. And you can layer them over the top of each other. Just try and make sure that they don't wrinkle too much. That's all. Okay. If it does wrinkle, just very carefully pull it up and lay it back out and I'm just going to coat that straight away with with this and we'll do some more on the other side and then that gives us a nice clean edge where that white was that got torn um, with the masking tape so let me cut some of these out And again, like this just goes so far. And you can mix and match these as well. Like it's entirely up to you. Like I said, that one there could look absolutely stunning on the right thing. You know, you might want to cut it in half and put half one side and half the other. And I think that would look amazing. So, okay, this side. This one down the front there. the top so I'm probably covering that up a bit but and then this one just there like that so 
So before I cover this one, I just want to quickly show you how it looks. But you'll see it all when it's dry anyway, so. Okay, so as you can see, that gives it a very fabric-y look. It, it really does just add a bit of pizzazz to it, so... You know, feel free to use any of those that you want. And like I say, you could mix and match. There's no reason why if you weren't really keen on this and you felt that the um, paint didn't add to it, there's no reason we couldn't do a strip of that in the middle and have some beautiful circles. Um, and why not? Let's do it. So again, just make sure that you get that second sheet off which isn't always that easy a slightly damp pan might do the job Look, I'm going to cut a piece of it first and then I'll do it it might be easier How wide would I need that? From there to there. So, okay. I'm sure this is a double one. It just doesn't seem to want to come undone. Here we go. Got it. Some are harder than others to get undone. So I'm just going to put that there. Yeah, I think that will actually look quite nice. So I'm just going to put that there. Position at least one circle in there. And then I'll just cut off around that without cutting the lace, of course. And then just pull this one back a fraction. So once that's dry, that will just add a little bit of, you know, pop of the white. And again, I'm just giving them a quick glue. And you will find that they wrinkle up a little bit, um, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. So I don't think I'm going to do it down there. I think I'll leave that. I'll just do it up this side here. So then it's just, you know, look, you could probably measure it, and I probably should. But in all honesty, once you get it, you can tear it off. There. So they should sit quite nice there. And then I think we might throw, a few, we've got a few diamantes here now. I'm not quite sure how strong um, the glue will stick but it's just a matter of how long it will take so I'm not going to put too many on but you can do it at home and you know you've got more time for it to dry in between but okay so I've got a couple of leaves here that I might put Maybe up around here. Maybe I'll put that 
on the end there. That's quite nice. So again, this is where your pegs will come in handy. If this doesn't look like it wants to stick straight away, which that one doesn't seem to really want to, because it's quite plasticky. So are these silver leaves? They're actually quite plasticky. So it, it will stick. It just takes a little bit longer. And this might stick one of the diamantes in there as well. And again, right, so there we have that. So that's basically all ready to go, but now we're just going to add some feathers. And I'm thinking I'm going to add feathers right to the top. Um, let me just have a quick look at it and I'll see. Do one on the side. No, I think I want them coming out to the side like that. So they do have a natural bend on them, these ones. So I'm actually going to have them coming out like that. Now, you know, if you want them asymmetrical, you could put it both on one side, but I'm actually going to do mine fairly symmetrical today. So while that there dries, I'm just going to roll this over. And again, you're definitely going to need pegs for this. I'm going to stick, you know what I'm going to do first, I'm actually going to not cut through it but just score it on the way through because they're quite hard and round these so and really crush them if you can. In fact I'm actually going to cut them off and that way the feather will stick a little bit nicer to this. Now, if you really want to, like I say, you could you could put your peg here and it will end up holding it against it. But just hold it down really, really firm. So then we've got a little bit of a thing there. And we're going to do the same with this one. But we are going to cut it off. Squish it a little bit. Again, we're going to stick a peg on to hold it. Right. So that's now all sticking quite nicely. Um, I've got a little bit of something there. Um, I don't know whether you can see that, but it's just I've obviously put a little bit of white um, paint there. But I can top. I can just touch that up again with the pink. I've got pink still left. So I can touch that up. Um, and you can go as crazy as you want with this. Like you could put as many of these on as you want. You might want a few, you know, white ones up here as well. You don't want it looking too much like, um, you know, a an Indian headdress, for instance. But, you know, I mean, this one's obviously very white and pink. So you could probably get away with a few white ones. But, you know, it's it's totally a matter of taste. I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to leave it just to the pink. And I'm going to get this brush. And I'm just going to top that paint up easy. And it really is just tiny, 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 weeny little bit. So... As soon as this is dried, I'll take the pegs off it and then we're going to give it one more go over with the um, PVA glue and water and that will actually act as its varnish. Now, I did before, and you could do this if you wanted to, this feather here, I actually dipped it in PVA glue to give it a plastic coating. Um, and so you could do that too if you wanted to or, you know, if you wanted to, you could get some um, varnish, some gloss uh, spray varnish and that would do a beautiful job as well but for now I'm just going to use what you've got and that's the PVA glue so we're just going to give it a few minutes for this to dry and then we're going to put the PVA glue over the top and we'll be finished okay so we're on the final stretch 
and I've been able to take the pegs off. It's just about dry. There's a couple of pieces that aren't completely, but the feathers are on. Everything's pretty much on and there's still parts of it that I'm not that keen on. So I, you will have had some of that in the pack. So I'm just going to use a little bit of that. So I've already cut one out. Um, so I've cut two off, but I only want that flowery bit in the middle. So I'm just not keen on this middle bit that I've done. So I'm going to cover it up with something. And this is what I'm choosing to do it with. So first one on. And I stuck another couple of little silver leaves on the side as well. So I'll pop that on. I'll cut another one out for underneath it. Okay. I'm going to pop this one up another way. there we are so that sort of covers that part up that I didn't like and then we've got these little flowers they come in the pack as well or I'm sure you had something similar and I'm going to put that in the middle there just to cover that part up that I didn't like and that's the beauty of this if you don't like something you can paint over it again or you can cover it with something else or you know it's entirely a pretty forgiving process in the long run you know and if you if you do it and you really don't like it and you want to go over and do the whole thing again rip it all off and start again you can do that the only thing is you have to really prime the mask again because it would have some lumps and things you'd want to sand it and prime it but okay so we've got that now right so now what we're going to do you will you'll have a metallic marker gold or silver in your bag of tricks and so I think we might just, I don't know, pop a couple of scrolls maybe on it. But anything you want, really. Just to give it a bit more texture and pattern. Are these really just like little S's. That's all they are. So that's those there and yeah, I think I might just do some random lines up here so just make sure I've got them going the right the same way And I might just do a couple of these same little S's just up here as well. might do a couple of the little lines down to here so it doesn't have to be anything too spectacular but it just gives you a nice you know look and then once you've done this like I say you have two um, ways of varnishing you can varnish with this or you can just get a spray a gloss spray or um, a satin whatever you want and just go over the top of it all with that and then you are left with your mask now you know you could do a lot more with that if you wanted to you do an awful lot more with that but anyway I'm going to varnish it and um, 
and then I'll show you the finished product when it's done. So I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you decide that you're going to do a whole lot more because it really does become quite addictive when you're doing it. It's um, And they're, they're just so beautiful to hang around the place. And, you know, it's nice to know that you've done it yourself. And it's also a really great activity for kids too because they can really let their creative um, self out and, you know, and just do something as bizarre or as crazy as you possibly want to do. Um, so good luck and I will show you the finished product when it's done. Thanks. Okay, so here it is. This is the finished product. It's been um, given a, a coat of gloss with the PVA. So this is the finished product. It's all done. The It's almost dry. It's not completely dry. The lace has had a bit of a go over too, so it's a little bit stiffer. Um, and it's, yeah, it's pretty much done now. That's the whole thing. So give it a try. See what you think. And I'm sure that if you do another one, it will just get better and better every time and you'll really enjoy it. And don't be frightened to use jewellery and, you know, old jewellery, not good stuff, but old jewellery that you got around, broken necklaces, beads, use absolutely anything. If you are going to put heavier stuff on, it's probably worthwhile to invest in that heat uh, glue gun because that will really make a, a solid base for anything that's a little bit heavier. But anyway, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed it and um, hopefully see you soon. Bye.